Hey everyone, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Michelle, and today I am going to talk about how to tell the difference between an ENFP and their four synotypes. Now, synotypes is a term that I'm introducing, so I will first start with explaining what's a synotype, and then I'll get into further detail about how to tell an ENFP apart from their other synotypes, and hopefully I can get a whole series rolling, but you guys know me, so I'm not going to promise a series, but I would like to kind of Get your gears going about what a synotype is and how to understand the nuances between two personality types that, at first glance, seem really similar. First of all, what the heck is a synotype? How do you even spell that? Why? What is... what? What are you on, Michelle? What kind of planet are you on? Well, a synotype is spelled S-Y-N-O-T-Y-P-E. Basically, syno, same, type. Type. And so, every type has four synotypes that we could be easily mistaken for. The first being the introverted-extroverted divide. This is where the person has the exact same four cognitive functions, however, they're in a slightly different order, and so on paper they seem almost exactly the same, and a lot of times in behaviors they seem quite similar. The second type we have is the same primary cognitive function. There are a lot of personality types that have the same cognitive function as their lead and get confused for each other. It's because the lead function, when it is in that position of first, it is the main primary mode of the ego of a person. And so, despite having some differences, they're going to look a lot alike, especially in behavior, especially in core desires. These kinds of things are going to be incredibly similar across the board with all types that have the same leading cognitive functions. Third, we have the types that have the same two middle functions. So whether they're both sensing and intuition or feeling and thinking, there are always two types which share the same middle two functions. And a lot of times they can be really easily confused with each other, like an ISTJ and an INTJ. Sure, they have some major differences because of their primary cognitive function, but if you're unable to determine that, but you know their middle two functions, it can be a little hard to figure out what their main function is. And then the final synotype is the one that actually has the least in common, though often gets confused for one another. This is one that I see for almost every personality, the J and P divide. A lot of times people say, I plan things, so I must be a judger, or I'm messy and late to everything, so I must be a perceiver. So to summarize, there are four types of synotypes, the introverted-extroverted divide, the same lead cognitive function, the same middle two cognitive functions, and the JP divide. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the ENFP's four synotypes. The first synotype is the most easy to get confused with an ENFP, and that is an INFP, because, I mean, on paper, we're basically the same type. The ENFP and the INFP share all the same cognitive functions, just in a slightly different order. The ENFP is N-E-F-I-T-E-S-I, -E -E and the INFP is F-I-N-E-S-I-T-E. -E. Looking at those straight on, it's hard to see how behaviors might be different, it's hard to see how orientations might be different, you're just, okay, one's the extrovert and one's the introvert. But the problem comes where a lot of introverts think that they're extroverts because they like talking to people, and a lot of extroverts think that they're introverts because they like to have their alone time. And the behaviors of these two different personalities are going to be more focused on the direction of their primary mode of thinking than whether or not they like to be around people. INFPs love people. ENFPs love alone time. I think these two types are very ambiverted, and I think a lot of types are very ambiverted. And so thinking about extroverted and introverted in terms of orientation with other people is the wrong way to look at it. What you have to look at is does this person or do you engage with the external world 
or the internal world. So an INFP is going to be thinking first and foremost, do I believe in this? Is this right? Is this something I like? Does this feel right? And the ENFP's first question is going to be, how are these things connected? How are these things related? What am I missing here? How does this all work? Why? And the ENFP, because of that primary question, they're going to be more engaged in the external world. They're going to be more engaged with asking questions, getting to know people, getting out there, not necessarily in a talking to people kind of way, but just in a genuine curiosity kind of way. The INFP, on the other hand, is going to be first judging the situation, first deciding if they even want to engage with the situation, first deciding if that fits with what they want. And so you're going to see a lot more trepidation from an INFP than an ENFP, especially when it comes to new situations. Am I saying that an ENFP cannot be shy, that an ENFP might struggle around strangers to let that part out of them? Am I saying that an INFP, even among friends, is going to struggle to get into that extroverted intuition mode? No. What I'm saying is that we have primary modes, and if you look at those, you can see the difference. Now, I've come up with two statements that I think well represent the two types and how you can tell the subtle differences between an ENFP and an INFP. So the ENFP is going to want to figure out what it is a person wants. What do they want? How do we find out what they want? How do I get to know them so I can figure out what they want? The INFP, on the other hand, is asking, why do they want that? What is making them want that? How do we figure out why they want that? The difference is very subtle, and it's a slight orientation. And I'm not saying that they both can't ask the same question, but it's going to be in that order. The ENFP is going to say, what do you want? Why do you want it? The INFP is going to say, why do you want it? What do you want? The second cynotype, and I think one of the most difficult to tell apart, especially when you're meeting somebody who has developed their weaknesses and has balanced themselves out from maybe a teenager, for instance, might be a little easier to tell than somebody who's, say, in their 30s or 40s. But the next cynotype is the type that has the same lead cognitive function. So the ENFP cynotype with the same lead cognitive function is the ENTP. Both of them lead with extroverted intuition. And this is going to come with a lot of similar external behaviors. The ENFP and the ENTP are going to be very concerned with figuring out how things can, are connected, figuring out how things work, why they work, what's going on, they're going to want to understand things. They're going to want to think about things that are brand new. They're going to want to find new ideas all the time. And that's going to kind of consume their ego. This is the way that their ego is built. They need new. Constantly need new. They become bored easily. And this is going to be a struggle with a lot of them. Even developed ENFPs and ENTPs struggle with needing new things. The real difference comes between the orientation of their second function because their second function is the other person's blind spot. So the ENFP is N-E-F-I-T-E-S-I and the ENTP is N-E-T-I-F-E-S-I. And so the ENFP doesn't have very much T-I and the ENTP doesn't have very much F-I. So this is where the real differences are going to start to surface. And I came up with some statements that I think are going to really help you understand the difference of the orientation of their second cognitive function. The ENTP, their curiosity is going to be grounded in understanding the way that people think. They're going to want to understand the decision-making processes of people. They're going to want to understand the logical processes of people. This is what makes them much more interested in debate and catching people when they say contradictory things because they love finding the way that people think. They love learning how people think. The ENFP, on the other hand, is more interested in finding what motivates a person 
the same as I said before, they want to know what you want, they are interested in finding the motivations of people. They don't care as much about the way that you think, more so the way that you, and feel is a mushy-gushy word, I don't really like that, but they want to know your motivations. What is pushing you to make the decisions that you're making? What What is driving you? What motivation do you have? And so they look quite similar. They constantly want to get to know people on a very one-on-one, -on -one, in-depth manner. But the ENFP cares about your motivations, and the ENTP cares about your... TI is hard for me to... to, to, to the third cenotype, and one that is quite commonly mistaken, though not as much for an ENFP, is the ESFP. So the ESFP and the ENFP share two cognitive functions in their middle two slots. They both have introverted feeling and extroverted thinking, which makes a lot of their decision making look quite similar, because the orientation is very similar. So the ENFP is extroverted intuition, introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, introverted sensing, and the ESFP is extroverted sensing, introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, introverted intuition. If you understand the differences between SE or extroverted sensing and NE or extroverted intuition, you might be able to tell them apart quite quickly. However, if you're looking at behavior alone, the two types are going to be very similar. They're going to be very engaged in the moment. They're going to be very engaged with the people around them. They're going to want to get to know people. They're going to be excitable. They're going to be energetic. But the real difference is going to come down to the way that they think and what they really care about. The ESFP wants to take action immediately. They want to make the idea that they have in their head a reality. And yes, they might have multiple things that they would like to do, but they're much more realistic and practical when it comes to deciding which is the best right now, which is the one they need to go for, and how can they make it happen. This is quite different from an ENFP who gets very excited by the idea of things and can get excited by the idea of many things and have trouble deciding which one is the best to take action on right this moment. Because they lack that introverted intuition, all the ideas seem great and they can get a little caught up in trying to figure out which one is best. The ESFP has that advantage over the ENFP where they can take action immediately and just do it. So the biggest difference between the ESFP and the ENFP is this. The ESFP says, let's make what you want a reality. Let's do it right now. The ENFP says, let's figure out what you want. The ESFP doesn't want to figure it out, they want to do it. The ENFP wants to figure it out before they even think about doing it. The ENFP is a lot of thought, a lot of less action. The ESFP is a lot more action. Finally, an other commonly mistyped cenotype is the ENFJ and the ENFP. Now this is the JP divide and this is actually the most different two personality types of the four cenotypes. Cognitively speaking, there are absolutely no similar cognitive functions in the stacking. The ENFJ is going to be F-E-N-I-S-E-T-I, -E -E and the ENFP is going to be N-E-F-I-T-E-S-I. -E -E Looking at the stacks side by side, you can see there's almost nothing in common. The ordering of the sensing, feeling, intuition, and thinking completely different. The orientation of the cognitive functions are opposite. However, we find a lot of times that ENFJs mistype as ENFPs and vice versa, and at first glance they can be very similar. My brother-in-law has said many, many times that me and my older sister are like twins, that we have almost the same personality, that when he's around both of us, he can't tell us apart. Ha 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 ha. But my sister is an ENFJ and I'm an ENFP. And the major difference there is not whether or not we plan, not whether or not we have visions or whatever it is, 
the major, major, major difference is what our motivations are. So the ENFP wants to know what it is that you want, right? We talked about that several times. What is it you want? What motivates you, etc. The ENFJ, however, says, how can we achieve what you want? And now you might be saying, that sounds kind of similar to the ESFP who says, let's get what you want. The difference is the ENFJ is going to help you create a plan of action to get what you want, whereas in the ENFP wants to figure it out what it is you want. The ENFJ is much better at determining what you want. They're much better at understanding the motivations of people quickly and easily. And they're quite perceptive to what those are. The ENFP sees too many possibilities to be able to clearly and accurately determine that without really getting to know somebody. The ENFJ, on the other hand, quickly and easily can understand what motivates a person and therefore will want to help them accomplish that. They will want to help them figure out how to achieve that. Which is why both types end up being kind of social justice warriors, whether or not you think that's a positive or negative word, that is what they often become, more so than a lot of other types, because they want to help people get what they want. They want to help people achieve their goals. They just go about it in different ways. And if you're unsure if you're an ENFJ or if you're an ENFP, the differences are so vast, but when you look at behaviors, they're going to come off very similarly. Excitable, energetic, friendly, caring, these kind of things. What you want to look at is their motivation and what they want to do for you. What they're offering you. Are they offering you a plan of action? Are they feeling bad if you're not accomplishing your potential? Or are they trying to help you figure out what your potential is? Are they trying to help you figure it out? And with that, I'm going to leave you guys to think about the synotypes. This is a concept that I came up with probably about six months ago and have been kind of stewing in my mind. Not really sure how I wanted to present it to you guys, but I think that after this weekend and after having done some episodes with the podcast where we talked about each of these types, it really helped me clarify some of the differences and I've been doing a lot of work. I'm actually writing a craft book with a friend named Erin who her link will be down below. We're working on a craft book for writing characters using personality and it's really helped me clarify a lot of thoughts that I've had in my mind about the differences between the types. Now that you have heard the differences between the different synotypes what do you think your four synotypes are? And would you like to see a video on how to tell them apart? Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful, amazing, fantastic day. Bye! Woo!